Welcome to In The Zone, your mental strength and endurance sports podcast presented by myself, Thierry from Jura Sports. So today we have a very special guest. It's Maddy LaRue, the Zwift Academy 2023 winner. I'm Maddy's coach. So this is going to be a different episode than the different ones because it's not very much going to be a, an interview type. It's going to be much more of a discussion between myself, Maddy, and myself, um, talking about how we've worked together, what we've gone through. Uh, and of course, with the emphasis, emphasis on uh, the Zwift Academy. I really hope you like this episode. Um, please follow her journey. Uh, she's an amazing athlete, an amazing person. I love coaching her. And it's just, I can't wait to get started uh, for this season. So please follow her on Instagram, Facebook, etc. Give a thumbs up on this episode. And uh, yeah, thank you so much. Enjoy the show. So uh, here we are with uh, Maddie LaRue. Welcome to In The Zone, Maddie. Thank you. So obviously, uh, we said that in the, um, just before. It's gonna, the podcast is going to be a little bit different because we know each other very well. Um, I'm your coach, you know, so uh, <laughs> I, I can say I know you well. So it's not going to be the usual interview format, but more of a discussion. And uh, yeah, obviously we we want to talk probably a bit more about the Zwift Academy, but let's probably take it back from the beginning and um, just tell us a bit about just a little bit of intro for people who don't know you. So a little bit about yourself. Um. Okay. Well, firstly, I've probably only been a cyclist cyclist for three years, going on my fourth year now. Before I was. Uh, I would say triathlete, but I did all the multi-sport disciplines relating to swim, bike, and run, and did some road running, athletics, uh, yeah, cycling on the side, but yeah, not really, just focusing on that, mostly focusing on triathlon, and then during lockdown, I uh, started thinking more about changing to uh, just cycling uh in that i know people always had they told me that maybe if i focus a little bit more on my cycling maybe i would get somewhere but i was just i always just thought like nah man just one sport's not enough you're crazy what would i do with all of my time um you still do that but anyway yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I see the, the cheeky the cheeky four kilometer run in the evening Hey, you don't complain. It doesn't interfere <laughs> with my training. The numbers are there. <laughs> um, so yeah, and then I got onto Zwift during lockdown and uh found out about Zwift Academy um and watched it that year. And then beginning of 2021, I officially made the move from triathlon to cycling and uh, Funny enough, one of the domestic teams in South Africa found me on Strava, this crazy girl from Bloemfontein, the town I, I am from, uh, riding crazy distances. And everyone was like, oh, this girl, what's she doing? Um, anyway, so they recruited me to race for them. Um, and then, yeah, at the end of the year, at the end of 2021, I finished with my degree uh, at the university in education. And it was either... <laughs> find a job or try and find a way to Europe um, and obviously I was I had to pursue both directions but in the end one of my teammates uh, spoke with, with she and Ashley Mormon Tashio uh, got me under got me noticed by the World Cycling Center um, and then yeah that's where I was uh, for the last two years, uh, 2022, 2023, and where I met Terry last year. Um, and yeah, then I came back uh, end of last year, a little bit earlier than I was supposed to, uh, just some rough times, uh, 
yeah don't know how much detail i should go into but yeah, anyway can... so it was yeah <laughs> we can talk a bit well, about that later but yeah yeah well i can just say i i don't want to name it like the world cycling center definitely was amazing and experiences i've got a mixed bag of experience i think but obviously for sure i wouldn't be the person or the cyclist i am today if it were not for those two years and the people i met there including yours truly has been amazing um but yeah so i was struggling to find a team for for the season for 2024 and uh, our understanding was that we could stay at the center for a max of three years so i was inquiring about that uh, the possibility of going back for a, another season um but unfortunately they didn't think that cycling was the sport I should be in and I should think about doing something else. Um, so some harsh words to hear, especially if you've only been in cycling for such a short period of time. And I think I've improved enough to warrant at least another shot, but clearly not. So I came back a little bit earlier. Just, yeah, it wasn't in it anymore. Uh, and yeah, I was knocking on every single door I could find to find my way back to Europe, whilst at the same time also having to apply for jobs here in South Africa because I um, have to look reality in the face. This is the situation I was in. So, and there were a couple of weeks or probably like a month and a half, nothing happened. I uh, heard nothing. I was like, what am I doing with my life? <laughs> Is it even worth training anymore? It's like, oh my word, what am I doing? And that's when you Terry reached out and we got to talking and it was like my only explanation of that time was you pulled me out of a very dark hole I was in. Um a word. Um and yeah, then we set some goals for the season and or for well. a couple of races and I, I guess the goal goals. was to the <laughs> goal was goals. to get back to Europe. The goal was to just find a team. Yeah, back, yeah. You know, before any racing. Goal. Yeah, and we did find a team because I got yeah, yeah, because I got the the Strava the Cyclist Alliance Strava grant, which was also quite a surprise because I applied just as take a uh, taking a shot at it, although I didn't really think. I stood a chance because I fell outside of the age bracket they put because I mean it was like if I remember correctly like 18 to 22 or 23 and yeah, I'm currently 27 yeah. so it was like should I try should I not try but for cycling you're you're young that's why those yeah you know. <laughs> well, yeah <laughs> that's yeah. probably why yeah anyway so and I I got it um and funny enough uh one of the how you put it ladies or people I had one of the, the many interviews during that process of applying for the grant was Danny Christmas who was actually also one of the the judges I would say at the the Zwift Academy finals week so that was quite interesting and uh, yeah yeah funny yeah. how things how dots start to connect once you start pursuing something that your your heart is in um and yeah, and then we also found found a, a French team, Lyon Sprint Evolution, that were willing to give me an opportunity and also willing to wait for me whilst I was trying to get all of the necessary funds because obviously it would have been all self funded, um, and coming which, from Africa, which is, is which is hard. which is a yeah, which is I think something that not many people realize that how lucky we are in Europe. Obviously I'm based in Switzerland, so I can travel wherever I want in Europe. No visa, no nothing, you know, you, I could, you know, okay, I'm way past it, but if I wanted to turn professional, I could live at my parents or, you know, and just the, the cost is not that big, but for someone living in South Africa to come to Europe, you have to not only have a, you know, well, you have to have a visa and then you have to fund your your whole year because unless you're in the world tour you know continental or below is very you're not being few, paid you're yeah. not being paid and you're paying to race for a team which is crazy and you mm. know we were looking at oh i need to win or i need to get well at this race this the joburg 94 7 
And it's like, if I win, I get 10,000 euros and then I can fund my year. But I'm thinking 10,000 yeah. 10, euros for one year. This is, this is a really <laughs> tight budget, you know? So it's really tricky. And I didn't even win. I came second. Yeah, okay. But <laughs> I got like 4,000 euros. Yeah, but, it, then, yeah, but okay. The but then you had the, 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 the grant, et cetera, et cetera. But I think mm -hmm. this is the moment where things start to open up a bit and, and opportunities, you know, as you said before, that a lot of doors were not opening, but then at that point, the, some doors were starting to there open. There was literally one week where everything started happening all at yeah. once yeah. in the direction of cycling, as well as the direction of teaching my, which I was applying for jobs. Yeah. I remember so, you almost to told me, I don't know if I should, if I should take that job or not. And is it the, Mm. yeah but it, yeah so uh, difficult but just to go it, back it, so it was like it, it was like yeah yeah it was like taking do i take be uh, do i make the grown-up decision and take the the stable job with the the set income and i will be able to to not live off my parents anymore or do i gamble everything and take a chance <laughs> yeah 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 but the rest is uh history i guess but it's um, I just want to go back to the beginning. So when, when, so we met, uh, in March, March last year. So exactly a year ago, basically. Yeah. A year ago. So I was doing my uh, level three course at the UCI and, uh, we had the opportunity. So, and we were staying for one month at, um, at the world cycling center. So we would have, we'd, we'd bump into each other at breakfast or, or dinner or during training sessions, um i could see you quite often on the uh on the wahoo kicker um in on, in the track you know so i'd come and say hi and looking at the sessions that you were doing and obviously just i was just super intrigued of how you were training and uh obviously numbers and things like that so and and i guess we always yeah we got a lot got along really well from from the beginning i guess it's just sort of you know, you're South African. I mean, I lived in the UK for a long time. That's sort of Anglophone, perhaps. Uh, I don't know, connection. I don't know. Our Somehow, personalities. Personality. Click. Yeah, exactly. We we got along well. I think it's also the um, there's there's a lot of similarities in how we like to train. I mean, you you're a big Zwifter. You love Zwift, um, and me too. I know some other coaches hate Zwift, and you know. So I was like, okay, this is this. You know, it's, there are similar similarities there, and uh, so during the course we were. Uh, as coaches, we were invited to join one of the training sessions that you were doing. And so some guys decided to go in the in the team car or in a car to follow the session. And I thought, well, you know, I've got my bike. Let's 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 go and experience it, you know, in real, you know, and I knew the numbers and I knew, you told me, you know, kind of what sort sort of numbers do you have and everything. I was like, oh my gosh, this is this is insane. And and I remember there was one girl on the course and she's a pro athlete. And she said, I don't believe it. These numbers are wrong. It's not possible. <laughs> and I, then I went and we trained and I looked at, obviously I have my Watts. I know my weight. And I was like, no, these Watts per kilo are real. That is absolutely real. And I remember just, I think you had a session, which was like hard, like VO2, and then yeah, I think it was FTP. like one, one minute, one minute two, hard, two, and then two and a half three minute, or four, or three minutes. Yeah, some, yeah, and then, yeah, two and a half minutes threshold, and then it's like a 10 second sprint. Yeah, and, and I think for me, and repeat. For, for the one minute, I think I had to hold above 500 watts, or if it was, or more, you know, to, to, it was insane. <laughs> I think I held, and I think you had to do six reps or something of that. And I, yeah. I think I held. The first one I managed, I think second as well. And then I had to just, I, I was catching you guys up during your rest because obviously I, I had to go I at my own pace. I came down on one of the, yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Came down that, yeah. on one of the rests because yeah, yeah. the climb disappeared. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So thanks for letting, reminding me that. <laughs> no, but anyway, just to say that those numbers were insane. And um, for, for me, it was really the, the, just great to watch you know great to to experience that um because you can watch it on tv and it doesn't mean much you know but when you when you really feel it and you know what it's like on a climb with a pro this is this is something else and well, um not a pro yet well, well yeah you were a pro no, you you are a pro 
and um and uh then i i uh I, yeah we went for a long ride once together which was good fun um and then yeah i remember going back to my kids at the academy and um because i guess that you were still at the at the world cycling center the the aim for you at the world cycling center is kind of to showcase your skills in the races and then to be hopefully picked up by another team you know this is the, yeah to help the, us learn and get racing experience the wcc is not a it's it's a it's kind of promoting riders from developing countries from, from yeah country. from from countries where their federations aren't able to support them in such exactly a way. yeah so the goal was never to stay there long term the goal is to always uh, find another team and so um i remember coming back to my kids at the academy and i said I, and i was I, I told them straight away i think yeah i uh, i just rode with the future superstar of cycling like this is she's just un, she's unbelievable and I, I i and i meant it you know i really meant it i said look look up look her up go on, you know i told the parents look go and follow her on instagram or something you know <laughs> she's just uh, she's just amazing and she's going to do really cool things um yeah that's that's that was my <laughs> that's my first impression so obviously now to think a year later that i'm your coach is quite mm. surreal for me to be honest but it's a <laughs> huge huge uh, privilege and um i guess it um happened uh was it october october yeah. i think yeah. and again the i'm first a, race I, was in november I, I, yeah i mentioned i mentioned that i'm a big uh, zwift fan and i follow the grand prix and you you'd been racing for on zwift at the the, the zrl the, the zwift grand prix for wahoo le Col. Mm -hmm. well yeah. that was the first i think i only did like two or three like, yeah it was last year yeah but um and and there was a because you had won stages on on yeah on... before the before the world cycling center yeah I so was you know, really so for people who for, for people maybe who have just started to watch swift they don't know that actually two years ago you were you know you were one of the top riders on swift one of these elite riders um, i mean i beat louis bates in the, in a race as well in yeah a it, in a sprint finish <laughs> yeah yeah that, that was the the one in france no the yeah yeah oh, yeah that was I, I love watching that race yeah um and so when I saw you, I remember it was the race on the Alp and mm. I was like, oh, I can't wait. You know, I see you on the start line. I'm going to, you know, it's going to be great to watch. She's going to do great. That's her type of racing. And let's be honest, you didn't do, you didn't do great. And then all of a sudden she disappeared. <laughs> yeah. I was like, what's going on? Yeah. Like, I mean, it, uh, this suits you perfectly. You know, you should not, at least not win it, but be contending there. And so I just uh, I just sent you a message and asked how you were and what's going on and I I just wanted to know why it you know didn't quite work out and then me being the oversharer that I can be was like just the, mm, this is what happened <laughs> yeah the, the it was like the floods oh how do you say that the the, the doors the, open yeah the floodgates open and the I just like, spilled open. all the beans <laughs> exactly and which was which you know. Which was very um, brave of you, you know, to open up like that. And uh, I just then offered my my help uh, to see where this could, because you were a bit lost, I guess, you know, in that in that training. Yeah, and not just... a bit. I was a lot. Yeah. Because okay. I was trying to coach myself, but I had no motivation. Because what was I training for? Yeah, which like... which is an important thing uh, for people listening. Uh, they've been they've been um, this talk hearing me talking about the why the why do you race is just so important and it's true if you didn't know why you were training then it's difficult and our first race was pretty quick it was the Joburg 94.7 obviously there was a lot of I wouldn't say pressure but there was pressure because you needed the money if you didn't have money to go to Europe then you know so there's it's it's a it was a big moment for us because you if, what if you had come fourth and you win, I don't know, 100 euros? I don't know. Would you have carried on? It's, it's, I don't it's know, tricky. because then I wouldn't have been able to say to Leon that, listen, yeah. I, I will have the money. Just give me some time. Whereas if, yeah, 
Well, they, they did say control. they did say yes, you can come to the team, but you say okay, yeah, I but can come, I, but I need money. <laughs> but yeah, but yeah. I can't I can't say officially thank you. Yes, I would love to come. Yeah. Until I know I have at at least the minimum yeah. amount to get there and sustain myself. Yeah, no, that's true. Yeah. And um, well, that race went really well. Uh, you came second behind uh, Carla Oberholzer, which she broke away in the final what was it 10k or 5 5 to 10k something like that i think yeah, there was 10k or something yeah it was it was, it was you, on a climb Carla and i and just Joe. and i just didn't have the the oomph yeah in my legs yet <laughs> yeah well you probably you know i know how you train especially when you're let let loose which is a lot of volume <laughs> a lot of stuff you probably arrived there not as fresh as we could you could have been but i, th I guess we uh, i had I had, well, we had, we, I think no, there's what, a reason for everything. Yeah. Yeah. So of course, but great. You, that was a great start. And, um, and then that was, we, we thought, okay, let's, but let's do the, the Zwift Academy. I think we had started it. I'm not sure how it went, from <laughs> when to when. Yeah. It's... Yeah. We, I did the first workout and then yeah. the second workout I did the week of the the 94.7 race yeah. but absolutely failed miserably yeah, yeah, yeah. She was yeah like i can't do this this is nonsense i don't want to do this anymore this is too hard yeah and then it's like okay well let's put it we can try again later and it's like okay i'm gonna go forget about that now and then when when i got, came second at 94.7 and i got the grant and got this pay uh, the the spot in leon i was like okay well no need for the zwift academy anymore just push it to the side we yeah we go back to base now and prepare for the for the season ahead but then a few weeks later got an email from from zwift saying ah oh, listen you've made the long list um can you please fill this in and please make sure to finish all the workouts and then that's where i was like asking like shit what do we do now <laughs> yeah well, we said, okay, well, we might as well do those and no, 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 no. use it you as said, training. You said you've got nothing to lose. Just, yeah. just do it as training. No pressure. You don't have to hit the your absolute best numbers it's because obviously, I don't know if other people also have this experience, but in my experience, my numbers outside are much better than inside. So mentally it was just, and with the heat we are yeah. having in yeah. in my town, it's just ridiculous to ride on the trainer. Yeah. Um, so it was hard for me to hit the numbers that I, I know I usually can hit, but you were like, don't worry about it. Just, just ride, just do it for training. Yeah. 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 And the, the, the funny thing was that to the last, I think it was the last two sessions where you like you you texted me saying um would you like to join me on this ride <laughs> <laughs> and and the 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 one the the one you joined was the that was two, quite two good times because 30 it minutes was or something two no? times 30 minutes at sub threshold um and yeah so i did we the trainer went on a holiday uh when we went to the beach and i did that from my grandmother's garage um, and you joined with and then the the last last one we did was like I think two days before they closed the whole academy yeah. was ended with a five minute all out effort and this was the one workout I dreaded the most like I did not want to do this one and then I was jokingly asking you wouldn't want to do it with me and then yeah, yeah. then you did <laughs> yeah I did, like, two, oh, I did two sessions and thanks to you i upgraded to a category so i got i got yeah. kicked out of my own team on zwift <laughs> but okay anyway um yeah and funnily enough i mean now looking back at now the tr how you are now okay well i'm jumping a little bit ahead but if you had to do those workouts again how better or worse i guess a lot better but how better do you think you would do those I think my numbers would be better. Yeah, for sure. Um, I feel stronger now, and more race ready. Um, but I wouldn't want to do that no. again. That would <laughs> no. be absolutely no, cool. no, no. But I, I think that now you're right. I think you're, it's funny because you still, you got selected, but your numbers now would be much, much better. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sure. It's the same. It's the same. I think uh, when we were at finals week, maybe I'm jumping ahead now as well. But 
I didn't expect that much of myself going into the inside test because mm -hmm. it, it was fine. The three minute effort, I knew I kind of had under control because we had, had done a lot of the shorter one, two or three, four minute effort duration. And I was fine with that. But the 12 minute, I was like, how the hell am I going to do this one? Because well, we've not really worked on this one and two. Well, you I don't you don't have climbs, you know. So that's another yeah, difficult my thing. Town, that... I mean, even the two minute efforts I did today, it ended just as I crested the little yeah. Yeah. speed bump. I would say so, in so my exactly. town. So it's really difficult, you know, to train for you know mm. ten minutes, a ten minute threshold or whatever when it's just pancake flat. It's when you I have mean, a climb. The, the, it's the thirty minute tempo efforts here are. I think it's good training mentally as well. And it's good, I suppose, looking forward to hopefully doing some time trials yep. that showing myself that I can hold higher power for much longer on flat surfaces. But yeah, it feels a lot harder than what it would do on a climb because uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. it's not fun to train those types of efforts where I live. <laughs> so we are now approaching kind of was it middle of january and so you well you got the the um, the call to that you were selected you were a finalist um uh, of two December. days before two days before christmas yeah okay so i remember so, that because it was like i was saying oh this is like a christmas present and if yeah. i can win it will be a birthday present because i arrived literally at on your birthday. in spain on my birthday yeah yeah so that's <laughs> Mid, so middle of January, you go, you go for the academy, um, to the to the final, and we knew a little bit about the two other finalists. Um, one one well, one of the girl, Laura. The one. Laura was your is your teammate on on the Wahoo Le Col. Well, yeah, but the other um, one I didn't know before. Yeah, no, Katie, we, I didn't Katie, know. we didn't we didn't know about her. I we try I tried to look a little bit about her in the UK. I could see a few results here and there, but her profile was private. I think on Zwift you couldn't see much, so okay. we didn't I really did, know what I to didn't, expect. I didn't do any investigation. But, well, I was you, just you, focused on no, myself. You, you no? say that you say that, but you did go on someone's Strava and and you found some segments. Yeah. So you know. But yeah. We we knew kind when, of a, we knew I, a bit what to expect. When I was there, yeah, but yeah. when I was there, it was like I feel way less relaxed, way less stressed than what I thought I would be. So yeah, yeah, yeah. no, exactly. So we kind of knew there would be some sort of test, like this inside test. I think it's quite, uh, although you know it's all out. We kind of looked at numbers of what you could mm -hmm. hold, but it's. Because if they're successive tests, then it's just difficult it, to just estimate what you're going to do in a fatigue state as well. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we knew there was going to be a lot of challenges, but uh, maybe tell us about the experience, you know, arriving there. Um, and, you know, I guess the, the exact content of, you know, people can watch on the on, on YouTube. And I really recommend that people watch the shows. They were, they were, they were great. Um, but... Yeah, tell us about yeah, you they arriving there and the experience. Though. Yeah. <laughs> they show very small snippets of well, all the things that actually happen. <laughs> so you arrive uh, you arrive yeah. on the on your birthday on the 23rd. Yeah, September? but I could probably say that so so yeah, we were, I arrived on the 22nd, uh, 22nd. the Monday of, of my birthday. Um but I I don't know if you remember, I arrived and I was really Oh. in a state because i i sat in zurich airport uh on my way to uh Denia and uh i was starting to get really worried because the night on the plane i started feeling some pain uh, in one of my teeth yeah and it was just getting worse and worse and worse but the and... week sorry and the week before you were ill yeah you, and the you week... were sick yeah you i was sick. i was you got i was ill yeah, I was ill, and and also I got uh, hit by a car oh, on yeah. the first training ride yeah, back. Course, yeah. <laughs> yeah, after being sick. Yeah, yeah. So you got you so, get sick, you get hit by a car, and then your tooth. You was you were in you were in a lot of pain, and I know you can yeah. take pain. So 
for yeah, you to say that was, it really hurt that was bad i was like damn i don't think i can sit a week with this pain like yeah i wouldn't be able to do the the challenges like for sure then i wouldn't even stand a chance to win because all my attention will be on this this searing pain that's coming from my mouth like what the hell is happening like the worst possible thing that could happen yeah um and then yeah so i was calling my parents frantically like listen can we just get a prescription from my dentist at home to send me something to help with this and uh i uh, i arrived um at the hotel um i didn't tell anyone that i was having problems with my teeth and once they gave me the bike i went looking for for a pharmacy that would give me the medication that they had sent me so i wouldn't recommend this to anyone please don't don't follow my example but during that whole week i was on antibiotics <laughs> the whole week but i did i did essentially or eventually because you told me to tell them i did tell the coaches that listen i'm yeah. fine again i'm fine I'm just on antibiotics for a little bit of a tooth infection. I was I'm also fine. quite I was also quite paranoid about the um, you know that I made you check the um, mm. the ingredients of all, what I on the water all and all that. You know. Yeah, yeah, because that's that's something again. You know, as me as an amateur, it, you know, okay, you can accidentally take a banned substance, and nobody's gonna you know doesn't matter. But mm. for a pro athlete, everything that you put into your body has to be triple checked you have to mm -hmm. know because it's your responsibility so every time you yeah, have well, sort of medication I, I, I said, have you checked have you checked yeah, yeah it's a yeah because no it's it's good no but i i always check because i mean even in december when we were on holiday they came two days in a row to yeah. blood and urine i mean yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah so you'll check regularly of yeah. off my parents a little bit but <laughs> it is what it is it is what it is yeah yeah, so I mean, doing the Zwift finals with all that was was quite, yeah. It was a uh, that was. It, it's funny because it's this it's this the the kind of the the big competition that comes to uh, you know that the most important kind of few days. It's like potentially a once in a career. lifetime opportunity, and all and of then this nonsense all of these, happened. Yeah, yeah, but maybe it took a bit your mind off of the pressure of the you know you had other things to worry uh, I about know. i don't know I so don't know. But, so when you but I, I even felt really relaxed when me and my dad yeah. were driving up to the airport um because for those who don't know it was a five hour drive from my town to the airport because yeah we we don't have an international airport in my town it's like flyover country so mm. yeah but anyway it, it you, i was and... very relaxed and so you were sharing a room huh, with uh, Laura and yeah, Katie. we were all all three of us sharing a room, and I can see how I remember. I don't know if it was Laura. I think maybe they said, "Oh, this is nice," but she would have wanted her own room. And yeah, whilst I think we can all agree, we would, we would anyone would want their own room. You you like your privacy, but it kind of to me it felt like it made it feel more like a training camp or like for races and stuff because from my experience that I've been now in Europe for the past two years whenever you go on training camps or going to races Racism. you always share a room um, I mean there was I will never forget the one race we did in France I shared a room with all eight of my teammates that was a, a, a quite an interesting experience <laughs> to say the least so to me, I, whilst uh, it could have been a little bit unsettling to some, I think for me it helped relax me more because it made it feel a little bit more, a little bit less important. If I can, yeah, if that but makes I, any sense. I think the the um, the Swift Academy is great, but it's not trying. It's trying to find it's a talent id competition what i would say that rewards and the reward is a professional contract in a cycling in a road cycling team mm. there's a big difference between that and only a zwift competition to find yeah, the best zwifter so there's a lot of people who 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 i see get very frustrated or angry with this whole thing like yeah but there's the Zwifting aspect, we didn't do much of that. We did one Zwift but, race. 
but, but there's no i mean zwift got us there that was yeah. the that was the whole exactly. point of zwift yeah but then the whole the whole point of the finals training the finals week uh, is to see okay but then because they've seen all our number and start numbers and historical data so it doesn't really help they put us through more zwift tests like no. that's not going to show them races. anything yeah any more information that they already have the point of the finals week is to see okay because the the winner gets a contract with an in real life pro team that races in in real life races not necessarily on zwift they want to see okay but can you manage yourself in a team setup and that be it on the bike uh, amongst the team sharing a room with exactly. your teammates um, working with one another not just doing your own thing um, can you handle yourself on the bike in a group setup so that's the whole point of the Zwift Academy and, and it, it felt like you were Finals. really integrated into the the, the Canyon Tram team as well um, you're riding a lot with the other members and mm -hmm. I think their feedback was also quite important of, you know, they, they, cause in the end you're joining a team. So if you, if they don't like you or if they don't get along with you, that's a bit of a problem. You, you no, you no, but it's, yeah, true. Yeah, 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 you, have yeah. to, you have to fit in the team cause you're joining a family. So mm. uh, if you have a, essentially, someone told me before that essentially the finals week is like a big personality test. <laughs> Yeah, because the numbers are all great. I mean, they're all, they're all, you all had great numbers. And we saw in the different, um, on the inside test, actually, that they were all quite similar. I think yeah. the, the only, the only time, it's funny because every time you were texting me after the episode, well, that was afterwards. It's like, oh, she's doing great at that. Laura did great at this. Katie did great. And Maddie did okay. Yeah. Maddie's just like, swimming Maddie's just, somewhere in the middle. She's, okay. I don't how, she's all right. I don't understand how I won because in all of the episodes, it's like this one stands out, yeah. this one stands out. And but, Maddie is just somewhere in the middle. It's no, like, but okay, the, how did Maddie win? On the, well, <laughs> on the on the on the TT, you absolutely smashed it. I mean, you you won it by quite a lot. And and again, for me, I'm again I'm totally biased, obviously. But when I looked at you riding the bike versus the other two. It just looked so more natural, you know, the, just the way you, you are on your bike, the way you move, the way you accelerate, um, you know, even just that, that acceleration from the TT, from the standing start, you were, you had the right gear, it was fine. And you could see the other words, like, uh, and just, and, and I even texted you once, I don't know who it was, I'm not going to say, but, you know, they're going up the hill and they were just rocking. And I told you, I mean, are they going to a Metallica concert or something? It's just, <laughs> you know, they, and, and they might put more power on the on the pedal. But they're wasting, be, but they're wasting well. so much speed because mm -hmm. the climb was not like a 15% climb, you know, mm -hmm. when you were doing these tests and all that. So they, they they showed power, but they didn't show distance. And that would have been interesting to to look at actually how far you went, because that's what that's what really matters. So you can have great power, but if you waste all that energy by rocking and just kind of doing a lot of that that yeah it's not not being very economical at all so it looked me, and, i think it comes down to also core strength if if your core experience you know you've stable been, yeah but also a great experience you you've been you know two years at the wcc racing and training and maybe the others haven't really they, they didn't have that that same that same riding experience um you know taking the bottles um I don't know, just the, the the behavior in the peloton, the descending. You know, we we know, and then you will admit this that descending is not your. You have worked a lot at it, and I think you're pretty good compared to what probably what it was two years ago. But yeah, even no, I'm glad but, you guys never saw me before, and let's keep it like this. I don't think anyone took any videos. Maybe my first sports director, Christina, but I'm sure she will keep them private because I was horrible. No, but on but on the on on the videos now on the academy, it looked really good. It looked really good. It looked much better than the other two, in my opinion. Well, that's that's thanks to my teammates from the past two years who've really, really been my the best yeah. teachers I could have ever had. Yeah. No, it's cool. So I, I think that's what was, um, you know, there's been a bit of a, yeah, and sometimes online they were saying, I think more on the men than on the on the, on the the women, because they said, oh, these guys on, they, they haven't really been Zwifting. Like one guy was like level 10 on Zwift. 
basically went from yeah. level zero I'm to ten. I'm the highest level of the yeah. three, of all three. So exactly. So the man is anything. a different story. <laughs> but in the end, you know, to sign up for the Zwift Academy, there's no level requirements. Mm -hmm. There's no. Mm -hmm. You didn't have to be at level 50 to participate or to qualify for that. So, you know, in the end, you can only, people can only, they might criticize that some didn't, you know, are not are kind of new to Zwift, but it's, you play and by the rules. Yeah. You know, if you, if yeah. you have, to, and, and it's in the just end, another pathway into the pro credit zone. That's right. Speaking from experience, the talent scouts are not going to come to South Africa or Africa to see if there are any riders where Zwift yeah. now places us in front of them to find yeah so. and i and i also think now that i i i um if you look at the zwift the zwift games now or the zwift grand prix and you look at road cycling you know the 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 professional road so road cycling outdoors okay in real life the 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 tr the training and and the the skills that you need are completely different mm -hmm. and I actually think that it would be, I don't think like a pro rider, the best pro in the world, whatever, could just come on Zwift and win a race. No. It's it's, it's so it's specific Totally now. different, yeah. You need the pack dynamics, the whatever, mm -hmm. because in the end, the numbers on one minute or five minute, whatever, are quite similar. But then the Zwift race will last from what? 20 minutes to an hour normally. Yeah. Whereas in real life, it's going to be two, three, four, five hours. So it's a completely different um, way of racing. Anyway. Uh, yeah. So, and you got the news that you won. So what was the, how was it like at the final day? Yeah, that was, I would say that throughout the whole week, I, I think I managed my nerves and stuff quite okay. Um, but during that last day or that last morning, I was like, shit, they're actually going to announce the winner today. And uh, then this whole thing is going to end and it's going to be like, I'm going either I'm going to gonna go home very happy or very disappointed. Um, sorry, the dogs. No, it's okay. Um, don't worry. You have, how many dogs do you have? Like six or seven. So <laughs> no, we have four dogs. Oh, okay. Four. Yeah. Why do you have cats as well? No. Yeah, and three cats. The, there yeah. you go. There you. Um. Anyway, so um, yeah. So yeah, I was really starting to feel the nerves on the last day, and um, kept I would how my sports psychologist would call it time traveling to when they make the announcement. I'm like, no, stop it, maybe stop it. Come back, come back to the present. Like you're yeah. not there here. Just focus on in the moment. What do you do now? um so yeah and then I must say that when we started the the final time trial I did feel the race the Zwift race from the previous evening in my legs and I was like oh I don't think this is going to be such a good TT but ah, I'm, I don't care anymore let's just I'll do my best and whatever happens happens and they didn't actually tell us or give us the results um only after I won one of the coaches told me he's like you want to see you want to see the times i'm like yeah sure and you showed me i was like wow okay i didn't i didn't expect that so that's quite cool um and yeah then uh so we came back from the final training and had lunch and then they told us okay girls can you please come downstairs because they in general over the whole week they didn't give us much information beforehand it was all just like given to us in the moment um so they, they called us all together after lunch and then they said, okay, they're going to separate us now so that the coaches can speak to us all individually or the sports directors individually uh, about the week and the decision they had made. And I was like, that's where it's like, started. like, oh my goodness. Oh, this is nervous. I don't want to be here anymore. And then it felt like forever waiting. Um, and I didn't know I was the last person that they spoke to. But anyway, so they called me up. I went to see Danny and Adam. And begin going in, I was all like chirpy and smiling and I suppose my happy self. And then as the conversation evolved, it was like the mood kind of shifted and changed. I'm like, 
accepted. Maybe I, I don't think I won. Like, oh, damn. Okay, don't cry, don't cry, don't cry. You're going to be fine. You're still coming back to Europe. This is not the end of the world. Just be a little bit harder. Um, yeah, and then when Dan Danny goes, and I'm sorry to tell you, and oh, my heart just sank to my feet. I was like, damn it, damn it. And then she goes on, and I'm like, oh, no, I won. <laughs> it's like this is not real um yeah it was it was quite a surprise and obviously I went into all of this thinking I had stood a good chance but I mean things like because this never happened to me and now I mean going from almost not finishing Zwift Academy to winning Zwift Academy yeah like what are the chances yeah no it's uh it's amazing it's really amazing. I don't. I, I mean, I think we we both had a good feeling as well before you went. I, I I think there was. I had this feeling that, it was it was, it was yours to take. But there's one thing of just being the favorite and and thinking okay, I, yeah. and actually delivering and doing it. Mm -hmm. So no, that was that was epic. Um, but that was middle that was end of uh no sorry yeah so it'd be end 25th or 26th of january something like that yeah and, uh, and we and the episodes yeah and then the episodes only aired a month later so we oh the be, longest month of my life we had to be quiet and everybody said oh she's going to the academy yeah yeah she's going <laughs> <laughs> no i actually went but yeah, we had a you know, we had a we had a Zwift race with the guys, and I said, "I say, oh, I can show you support for Maddie." And it's like, "Oh, I watched yesterday's episode. How is she feeling today? Is it going to be?" Yeah. It's like, well, that can, that was a month actually, ago. <laughs> so yeah, I, I was the the post I made on Instagram. I tried to also like help Zwift in selling the story, and that okay, we're there now. It's it's yeah. happening now, um, but yeah obviously we knew what happened yeah. and the results so <laughs> yeah and then okay yeah so so that's for us you know a huge i mean we had only been working since october you know mm -hmm. so maybe i don't know was it two three two weeks in october or three weeks i don't know so let's say october november december and that's january you're winning that so we get second at the joburg uh you win the Zwift Academy we're kind of this is all of a sudden it's just uh everything goes well and <laughs> and then and then comes nationals which and then was comes the actual nationals. aim not Zwift Academy That's true. the aim was the, nationals you're right that the aim the the goal of the season was to to do well to podium at the nationals mm -hmm. and uh I uh I decided to to come to South Africa to to mm. to support you and and uh, you know meet your family and it was just uh, I think it was I mean over looking back it's it, it was a it was a we had a great time I think it was a great bonding experience as well um but obviously it didn't really go to plan but you were you were absolutely on fire I mean your your numbers the form was just there and unfortunately a crash and race is over bike racing yeah it but you know i think something is that if you had to crash at one race yeah it's better I, to crash I, at nationals than if something would have happened at zuft academy because or at joburg yeah you know, because those two races those two events kind of like made the path that i'm on now whereas yeah. nationals yeah it would have been great if i had come top three or for me i thought it was my race to win yeah. but it it wouldn't make or break it's not making or breaking my season whereas yeah. 94.7 if i hadn't come top three that would have okay made me lean more towards being a grown-up and taking the teaching job and if yeah. i hadn't won Zwift Academy. I mean, yeah. So no, no it, I mean, it was it obviously it was it was it was tough because we were on a high, and mm -hmm. and then ah, oh, you, you crash and it's just uh, um. But I, 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 it just makes you. It just show like you said, it's bike racing, and 
it you can't just win and show up and win all the time and you have to be ready and we learned we learned a lot from that yeah and uh next year it's at the same place yeah we'll, we'll go again we'll try again that oh and that means more heat training <laughs> your favorite session yeah so they sarcastically yeah yeah so that was one thing that you actually told me like nationals is going to be really hot so yeah, i need to prepare for but, that it's like but, okay but but i thought she didn't by know that by that i meant ride outside in the heat of the day which i okay. had done the year before not sit on the trainer with as many clothes on as you could possibly put on yeah. and spin at 100 rpm no that was not what i meant yeah so those i followed a yeah. um a workout you know with like a basically a uh, a protocol that we had learned uh, during the the course of the uci um and yeah it's basically four to five sessions a week about one hour inside on the trainer going easy but Based, you normally have this sort of core, this suit, this heat suit, which now you have. Um, yeah, because you brought it for me. For yeah, because it's not finished. It's going to happen again. Um, but you didn't have it. So you, we had to, I said, okay, just put, okay, put Improvise. a winter hat, put whatever clothes you can. And yeah, those were pretty, pretty tough sessions. Yeah. And, 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 and just add on those sessions usually happen after, after. maybe yeah. a, a four or five hour ride with some intervals so yeah. it wasn't like i was doing them it's fresh. a recovery ride <laughs> but look it worked you were in the shape and you are in the shape of your life at the moment so mm. i really feel that those those things really prepared for you um mm -hmm. prepared you well for, for the swift academy for sure and then nationals okay but uh and so here we are now it's um middle of march you're flying to Spain next week. And we have some races coming up, although we're not quite yeah. clear yet of the, the full program and all that. But what would be your, putting you a bit on the spot there, but <laughs> it's good. In any case, we'll have to talk about this. What would be a successful season like for you? I handle myself better in the peloton. I'm more at the pointy end and not yo-yoing at the back and able to part, uh, contend in the races and not just participate. Yeah. Yeah, I think this is... Uh, and that's probably why it's so good that now the winner of the Swift Academy goes into the, the continental team rather than straight away to the World Tour team. Yeah, he's looking at he's on the yeah. <laughs> it's like the dog. If you if you he's also in the interview. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yes, it's you. Yeah. <laughs> the ears up. That's good. Um no, it's it's about learning the trade. And mm -hmm. again, I think you are in the situation where you're learning to learning to compete. You know, you've got the numbers are there, you know, the skills it's I think are, the skills the are there. It's gonna be the tactics. Again, yes, further you, you get get still better skills, but to be tactically aware, the awareness of the feel to feel the race, um, and if if you do that, I think you you'll be you'll be at the at the pointy end of races. And for for me, the the greatest thing. I mean, I don't know if irony is probably not the right word, but like, what a coincidence my one goal and it's even the i mean the picture on my on my phone and on my, my screen savers and everything is that my ultimate goal is to wear the polka dot jersey in the tour de femme uh tour de france femme avec zwift and here i am on the development team now of the team that actually won that jersey last year i mean what are yeah. the chances yeah <laughs> i get to learn from the best exactly yeah no that's a huge opportunity and um no and small things like that which was funny because like you you um i had during my course i've met uh, elise elise chave and uh i knew you did you had ridden with her during the academy and i te i texted her say oh you, you rode with maddie today and i was like and then she was she i think you said she she came at dinner I was like, yeah oh. at dinner she's like your coach sent me a message i'm like ah. <laughs> okay. uh, these small connections like that but uh yeah no i, th I think it's um 
I mean, I can't wait to get started. I can't wait to see you race. I guess you are as well. Um, it's not about really the result. It's more about the the process and just learning. And 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 you, we're gonna, we're going to do great. I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, I'm really excited. So yeah, I have to keep her on the couch because the other big one is sitting in the corner there. And if they get together, it's oh, going to become gonna very fight. noisy. That is what I was trying to avoid when I was walking now <laughs> to get her. <laughs> no worries. Yeah, cool. I mean, um, it was. Is there anything you'd like to to say, to share, to you know, to say any anything else? I don't know. I'll I'll try my best, as you would put it, to try and share my story, yeah, um, and my my journey. Um, and for one, I am I know I've said it, but I I've, before, but I'll say it again. I'm very thankful that you did come to nationals and get to to meet at least my mother. Um, that's yeah. really special to me. Um, but yeah, so and especially now supporting during this. Difficult it's tough time, time. yeah yeah so i mean obviously like we know and i didn't i didn't really want to approach too much the subjects mm -hmm. here i don't want to keep the podcast a bit on the on the light touch but <laughs> obviously yeah. we we went through difficult times and your because your mom passed away um I last weekend yeah. so it's you know you've gone through so many difficult things over the last two years or a year of, let's say one for year me, it I would feels say. like the last couple of months since coming back from from switzerland has been like yeah a really massive roller coaster ride good yeah because bad. at the same time but, at the same time you want to celebrate zwift and and everything mm -hmm. is the best time it, it should be the best time of your life and i guess <laughs> at the same time it's also the worst time of your life yeah so it's yeah. a very mixed emotions but uh, yeah, that's life, and we have to ride those waves uh, of emotions. Well, and, and I am keep going. I am really happy. Yeah, I mean, obviously, last week was a little bit hard training wise for me. My head wasn't necessarily in the right place. But this week now, I mean, I even feel like I surprised myself that I was able to yeah. to throw out the numbers that I was able to do. And it's like, okay, well, even though it's a really hard, tough situation um and the sad time and everything i feel like now i have extra motivation to yeah. succeed and to make it because yeah I mean, now i have to make it so you will you will make it <laughs> yeah. we know that well thank you so much uh for your time it's great to catch up in any case we talk most days in any case but uh yeah. to <laughs> record this and um hopefully we can do this a uh, bit more often so we just catch up on on some training sessions or maybe the f after the first few races that we just chat and what kind of what's the experience like um but uh again you know i said it when i was in when i was in south africa is that you you know you are someone who's you know, you're not just a bike rider. I think you've got a, you really, again, okay, I'm biased now, but you have, a great, you have a great personality. You're, you're, you know, you, I really think that you can be a great role model for kids, um, young girl starting cycling. It's just, uh, so, you know, I've got, like, you know, I've got the, my two girls and it's, it's great to have people like you as pros because you can i can really say okay look 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 how good how uh, that's who she is and that's how she you know how she behaves how she is she's a pro and she's doing that she and and i'm really happy for my kids to watch you and just say oh I, i'd love to be like her you know <laughs> and you can't say the same thing in men you know for football or whatever you <laughs> know what I mean? so it's yeah. it, i think i think you have a you have a you know really a bright future in the sport yeah you are 27 which is not you know you're not super young I'm not but super young <laughs> but you know women's cycling does go you, you for sure you have a long time in front of you um your training age is like I guess relatively young in 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 cycling um but uh no I'm just uh super happy to be part of that journey I'm really honored to be um 
your coach it's it's uh it's, no no i'm it's thankful been... that you reached out because i don't know what would have happened had you not so yeah and i think you know in the end it's um it's a it's a it is a people relations you know coaching is just about relationships you know do you it's about understanding your athletes you know just not just being there for the person at, when when you know they're not going well or understanding and you know putting a an arm around the shoulders and and things like that that are important in the end you know training sessions prescribing a training session anybody can do that you, you could have a coach on a you can have an ai coach you know but it's about that relationship which makes it can can you you know do those numbers but be, why do you do that you know and that that's that's for me is the the, the the really important thing having that connection and uh i'm not i i'm not going to say i'm the best coach in the world because you know i didn't well, for i didn't me, make you you're the best coach i've had since I started my <laughs> but, sports but I think, career, so. but we work really well together, you know. Mm. So, and that—that's what that's in the end. That's what matters. And uh, mm. yeah, cool. All right, enough uh, throwing flowers at each other. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, uh, and uh, yeah, we'll catch up soon. All right. So thank you so much for listening to today's episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, Maddie, like I said, is an incredible person, a phenomenal athlete, and I'm sure she will do absolutely great things in the world of cycling. And for sure, we will have her back uh, with more discussions of this type along the season. It's just super exciting uh, what's happening. And uh, yeah, we're going to share it with you all along. So she's going to have an amazing journey. I tell her, you have to share that journey. Tell tell more about yourself. Um, it's not always uh, easy, but no, she's going to do a great job. Um, and please, so follow her. Thank you so much for listening to the show. And we see you soon. Bye-bye.